Adobe has just released a brand new update to Lightroom Classic 13.0, which contains a ton of new features. And in today's video, we're going to be going over the top three. That is lens blur, HDR optimization, and my favorite, point color. And I'm gonna start right now. So the biggest change in this update is called Lens Blur. And what you can do is basically create a shallow depth of field effect and you can also change the type of bokeh in your photo after you've taken it, which is really impressive. Now you can do this in Photoshop, but what's really nice about this new feature is firstly, it does it automatically, and it also creates a depth map, which you can then change and adjust. So let's go ahead and use this new feature. So before we go ahead and start using Lightroom Classic's brand new features, firstly, you need to make sure you've got it up to date. To check what update you're on, all you'll need to do is go ahead, go up to where you can see it says Lightroom Classic in the top left-hand corner, drop down to where you can see it says about Lightroom Classic. And as you can see, it says release 13.0. So make sure you've got 13.0 or newer to use all of these new features. And the first feature we're talking about is lens blur. So what you need to do, go over to the develop panel found on the top right hand side. And if you have a look at all of these toggles, you can see just underneath transform is a brand new slider called lens blur. Now if we go ahead and open it up, you can see everything is grayed out apart from apply. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click that like so. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, will really determine how long this takes. I've got a really fast Mac Studio uh, M1 Ultra, so it does this in no time at all. But if you have got a slower computer, then you will find that it does take maybe several seconds or even up to a minute to apply this effect. And what it basically does, it creates a depth map and basically creates a shallow depth of field effect, which then you can adapt and change. So. If we go ahead, what I recommend doing is going to Bokka and clicking on this little arrow icon, it will drop down with a sub menu with a few more features. And then also I would click on here where it says visualize depth. I'd also have that as a drop down as well. So the first thing you've got is blur amount. It's fairly obvious. If you decrease that, it reduces the amount of blur. And if you increase it, increases the amount of blur. But what you've got is you've also got different types of Bokka and you've got five to choose from. So you've got one, two, you've got the third one here, fourth one, which actually I think is my favorite, and then you've got this cat's eyes one in the end. And you've also got a slider called boost, which again, kind of brightens and kind of changes the type of bokeh or the boost amount with inside your photo. Again, I would really experiment to see kind of what works for your specific photo, but I find 50, well, the average seems to work the best. Now below that, you've got your focal range. And this is what I was talking about in a depth map. So what it does is it works out what's really far away and what's really close to the subject and kind of creates a depth accordingly. Again, creating like a depth map. So what we can do, if you go ahead and click visualize depth, you can actually see what Lightroom Classic thinks is and isn't in focus by creating this kind of heat map almost. So the warm colors, the yellow colors are in focus and then the very dark colors are out of focus. And again, you can kind of ch choose what's in and what's out of focus by dragging this around. You can also increase it as well. You've got the tonal ranges here. So I find, you know, 30 seems to work quite nicely, but again, really experiment with how kind of what works for your photo. And then underneath here, you've got focus and blur. So for example, if you wanna change the focus amount, again, to do with the depth map, you can do, and then you can also change the blur amount. So for example, if I want this section to be out of focus, for example, you can do that. Or if I wanna go in and add to it, you can do that. So you can kind of change it, refine it. You know, if this area you want to be in focus, for example, you can do that. Or for example, if you don't want it in focus, you go ahead and remove it. Think of it like the paint tool or the brush tool found within the masking panel. It's very, very similar, but you're controlling the amount of blur, not necessarily a mask at all. Now, obviously, if you want to kind of remove that, what you can do is just basically undo, because obviously a lot of that was mistakes, so not necessarily uh, want to do that. But again, what I would recommend doing is just really experimenting with all these tools, find out what works for you, find out what doesn't. I find it works in some cases, but not others. But again, this is an early access tool, so it's not gonna work 100%. So do give it some time, do give Lightroom Classic a little bit of time to get this working. But I must say, this is a worthwhile tool to use, especially if you're interested in portrait photography. 
Now, the next big feature brought to Lightroom Classic is HDR optimization. So if you actually use a HDR monitor, you can now edit and output HDR content directly in Lightroom Classic. Now, I personally don't own a HDR monitor, mostly because they are incredibly expensive. But if you do have a HDR monitor and actually utilize it, then you are going to be able to actually use the new Lightroom Classic. Basically, you can experience an increased depth and realism with brighter highlights, deeper shadows, and an improved tonal separation with more vivid colors. Again, you are going to need a HDR monitor to actually utilize this, but if you do, you can now edit and output HDR content, which I think is really impressive. And the last feature we're talking about today, and probably my favorite within this update, is called Point Color. What you can do is target a specific color or a specific hue, and you can adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance accordingly. Very similar to hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, but you've got a little bit more control over the entire process. So let's go ahead and utilize this new tool. Now, to start using Point Color, it's actually very similar to using HSL. It's actually in a subcategory below that. So to start using it, all you'll need to do is go over to your Lightroom Classic, drop down to where you can see the develop panel. Then you want to go to where it says color mixer. This is where your HSL used to be. Now, if you go ahead and open it up, you can see they haven't changed or removed HSL. What they've done is they've actually just updated the UI a little bit. So instead of adjusting HSL, you can now go to color. So you've got these little icons here, which means you can change every single one, or you can have them all drop down at the same time. Or if you don't like that, and you like the traditional look, then you've also got that there. So let's go ahead and talk about point color. Now, point color is very similar to HSL color, but instead, instead of you selecting a band of color, you're selecting one particular hue. So firstly, to select a color, what you'll need to do is go to this little eyedropper tool found on the left-hand side. Then you want to go is just hover over a color of your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and select the green of the leaves here. And once you've selected that, you can see it opens up with this color palette here with three sliders. You've got your hue shift, saturation shift and luminance shift. Now, depending on how you like working, you could go ahead and drag this around if you like, or you can go ahead and use the sliders to give it a little bit more fine tuned. So for example, let's say I want to warm this photo up by changing the leaves here to more of a golden color, more of an autumn color. Go ahead and take the hue slider here and drag it over to the left. And as you can see, we're not affecting any other color within the photo, we're just affecting that particular hue. So again, we can target it, Go ahead and move the saturation, maybe make it a little bit more saturated. Maybe we make it a little bit more darker. You can make it a little bit more brighter, for example. And what it will do is it will show you the original color and then the color you have changed it to, which is really nice. Now, if you want to see what you've selected, you can go ahead and click this button here, which is called Visualize Range. What it will do is it will black and white everything apart from the color that you have selected. But what is if you want to increase the range of that? Like for example, over here, you can see we haven't selected all of the leaves. Well, if you go to the range here, you can increase that. And what this will do is it will increase the amount of a color that you have selected basically. So you're increasing that tonal range. And you can see if you go to the drop down here, you can see exactly how it is split. So you've got your hue range, saturation range, and luminance range. So for example, if we want to target this green part here, what I would probably do is go to the range here, and I would increase that like so. So we're basically targeting every part of that leaf. Now you might find that it doesn't target everything and that's just simply because you know the hue is so far away from the original color. But again, you can change that. You can see where it's kind of highlighting. Again, if you don't want that, you can turn off visualize range to see how well it is affecting. Now obviously this has gone a little bit too crazy. So what I'd probably do is just reduce that slightly and you can basically really target exactly what color you want. Now, this is obviously just some leaves, but it really works well with clothing, I find, because clothing is a little bit more of a consistent color than the leaves here. So what we could do, go to this next photo here. Now, this is a lovely photo, but what I have found is the before and after, you can see that dress color, that blue, has basically completely gone with the preset that I have applied. So we can actually bring that back using point color. So what I'm gonna do is go to my eyedropper tool, Go ahead and select the blue of the dress. Now what we can do is basically bring that blue back. Bring back some of that saturation, bring back some of that luminance here. And you can see we can really change it, which is really cool. And then obviously if you want to go to visualize color, we can see exactly what color we are targeting. So 
I think it's a really powerful tool. I think we're going to be able to do a lot with it. Again, experiment it, see what you think of it. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? But I must say, I think this is probably my favorite tool added to the new Lightroom Classic. Brilliant. And there we go, guys. So there are my top three favorite features of this Lightroom Classic update. And of course, there's so many more features to talk about, like, for example, preset search. So you'll be able to search for a preset using keywords, which I think is really handy, especially if you're working on a lot of presets. So write down in the comments below, what is your favorite feature of this new Lightroom Classic update? I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.